guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to increase your speed while taking a medical coding certification exam. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so uh, I got this comment from a viewer and I'm gonna read it and then we're gonna get into it. So here we go. All right, so the viewer says, hi Blue, any tips on how to increase speed for the CPC exam? I see a lot of videos to do process of elimination, but it didn't help me. So here's the thing, guys. There's two major medical coding associations. There's the American Health Information Management Association and the American Academy of Professional Coders. Now, both of them have their medical coding certifications. AAPC has their flagship medical coding credential, which is the CPC, the Certified Professional Coder. They have many other ones as well. Uh, the American Health Information Management Association has three medical coding certifications. The CCS, the Gold Standard of Medical Coding Credentials, the CCA, and the CCSP. So all of these are all timed exams. These are the four main medical coding certifications that employers do look for, okay? So these are all timed exams. Now, the biggest thing that this person was talking about was doing process of elimination, that that's what they see. On my channel, it's a little bit different. I am not out here promoting uh, to do the shortcuts. I always tell you guys, and this is the, probably the thing that's gonna irritate a lot of you, uh, this is the number one way to increase your speed on a medical coding certification exam, and that is to practice. Practice, practice, practice. I have said it many times on my channel, process of elimination will only take you so far. When you are going to take a medical coding certification exam, this says that you are ready to demonstrate your competence when it comes to medical coding. Now, there's a lot of people that just want to hurry up and get their certification so they can get out there and um, get the first job and make all this money and, you know, all of these things that they've been hearing. But here's the thing. Um, when you're going in there and this is saying that you're ready, if you're just trying to hurry up and pass and you're just trying to do process of elimination because you don't really understand. But don't worry, um, the, the uh, school said, oh, that they'll teach you while you're on the job. Not so. Many times you'll hear from brand new medical coders when they say that you're learning a lot on your own. Some people do get lucky and get a fantastic um, supportive team. However, that doesn't always happen because you are expected to know what you're doing when you have your certification. Now, don't panic because you heard me say that just now. But what I'm saying is this, if you feel like you have to use process of elimination a lot, that tells me as somebody who is a veteran medical coder that you are not studying enough, meaning that you're not looking up enough of the codes. And this is not just looking for scenarios and you know looking up the codes and things like that. This is actually taking the time to get a list of codes from anywhere and looking them up, taking the time to look them up um, throughout the book. You have to be very comfortable with your books, which is why I always recommend that when you are studying, that you are not using tabs, that you're not writing all over your books, you're not highlighting your books. Now, the thing that I recommend because of this is because when you have tabs and you're working through your book, you will start to tear your pages because the tabs will get in your way if you're using the book sufficiently. If you are not and you're just kind of gingerly going through and oh, just being oh here and there, you know, of course you're not gonna be comfortable with the book. Of course you're still gonna be lost with the book and being lost with the book while you're in the test is not the time to be lost with the book. So it all starts with you taking 20 hours per week to study. If you're hyperventilating right now and saying, oh, I can't do that, I have a full-time job and I work 40 hours and blah, blah, blah. If it's important to you, you will make the time. Everybody has 30 minutes or one hour a day to be able to piece together three and a half hours in order to do this five days per week. So you make 17 and a half hours of studying during the week and then two and a half hours on the weekend. And then you have the rest of the time to yourself. But all of this practice time, 20 hours a week through of looking up the codes and looking through the book and being so proficient in it that you won't even need the tabs, 
That's what you need to be doing before you get to the exam. It's not about these little stupid shortcuts because that's exactly what it is. And it's exactly what's going to show when you get out into the real world. And let's just say that you barely passed that test by the skin of your teeth. And you're like, oh, well, a pass is a pass is a pass. Yes, a pass is a pass is a pass. However, what we do affects a lot of people. And at the, at the end of the day, it affects the provider's bottom line. It also affects how much money the patient has to spend. Patients who are sick and they sometimes are on a fixed income, they don't have a lot of money coming in, or these bills are going to get really expensive really fast. And it is on you to make sure that the documentation is there to support all the codes that are being selected. If you are incompetent, meaning that you don't know how to look this stuff up, you never really practiced, no one ever showed you when there's plenty of books, these workbooks that can help you to develop your skill. But a lot of times people are just too afraid. They don't want to be looking in these books. They don't want to have to be flipping and doing all of these things because they want to tab their books. They want to do process of elimination, which I have always said will only take you so far. So process of elimination, let's just get this very clear right out of the way, right? Is when you have the question, of course, it's multiple choice, and then you eliminate two of the answers that you know are wrong, and then you, you select from the other two. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a slight difference between those two that you have left to choose from, and that's how you choose. However, if you are studying like you're supposed to, you're going to see those codes in a different light. It's going to make a lot more sense to you because number one, you're going to know the series of the codes and you're going to know, okay, well, if this is an M code, I know this is musculoskeletal, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's the thing you want to be able to be that good to look at those codes and know where to go. R codes are your symptom codes. The Z codes are for like the encounter or um, the, the purpose of the encounter or just telling more of the story and the history and things like that. So if again, if you're practicing you will be able to uh, get a lot more a lot more proficient and you will be ready for that exam a heck of a lot more than you will be than the person that's just doing all the tabbing and trying to guess their way through the exam. You should never be guessing your way through the exam because that is a sure fire way to fail that test. And you don't want to fail the test because it's very expensive to take the test. And you don't want to keep having to take the test over and over again because you're just trying to barely pass. Stop and make sure that you're actually studying. Stop and make sure that you're actually doing 20 hours per week of looking up codes. Now, the book that I recommend, if you have the ICD-10-CM, Expert for Physicians from Optum, this is not an ad for Optum. Um, however, I love that book. That is the ICD-10-CM book that I recommend. It is, you're, you're able to use that with, with either association, AHIMA and AAPC, do allow you to have your choice of ICD-10-CM publisher and whatever book that you want. I recommend the expert for physicians. Why? Because as I have demonstrated many times in my videos when I've talked about the books, at the beginning of every single chapter in the ICD-10-CM book, there are questions and um, like scenario type questions and there's the answers and there's a rationale. So I believe and I have always advised that when you're practicing studying for the exam that you cover up the answers in you know your ICD-10-CM book, Expert for Physicians from Optum. You cover up the answers and you make sure that you look through uh, the, you know look through that chapter, excuse me, look through that chapter for the book for the um, for the uh, answers so that way you can find out what the answer is and you can start getting more confident with the book you will be able to know where to go in the book and having more practice with the book is what a lot of people need but they just want to run away from it because they don't like books it's too big and oh it, you know there's just so much of it keep your books clean don't be writing and highlighting and doing all kinds of garbage to it because it has all the answers. The um, coding manuals are written by doctors and scholars, so they know what they're talking about. You just have to learn to trust the book. And again, the more time you spend with the book, the faster you will get. And that is how you will be faster when you are in there taking the test. Now, when I um, 
took the uh, CCS exam in 2021 in November is when I took it. And I had taken from the end of March all the way till like the beginning of October to practice and practice and practice because I know my way around the outpatient side, right? So CPT was no big deal to me. And, you know, all of that was, was squared away. What I was concerned and worried about was the ICD-10 PCS portion. So what I did was, again, going back to Optum and not an ad for Optum, <laughs> again, <laughs> but ICD-10 um, PCS is the book that I used from them. It's a spiral bound book from Optum. And in the back in Appendix M, there is the, um, uh, it's like 388 uh, procedures to look up for ICD-10 PCS. And doing that, looking up all of those codes helped me to, number one, know what I was doing with PCS. If I know that the CPC is, does not cover that, but if you are taking the CCS, this is something that you should listen to. <laughs> That's how I got faster with that one because I had taken the time to look up those 388 uh, procedures for ICD-10 PCS. And again, that's what sealed my victory because I passed that exam just like that. So that's the thing that you guys need to start practicing. It's not about the stupid shortcuts. Stop trying to do shortcuts. Stop trying to rely so much on a uh, process of elimination. There are going to be some things that you may not know and you may not understand. And so there really is no point <laughs> in trying to focus on something that you really don't understand while you're in the test. And in that case, if there's something that you absolutely do not know, you just could never wrap your head around it like cardio or something, cardio procedure, then you're going to look at the answers that you have. And if you're doing multiple choice and then you make sure that you um, just select from there, whichever one you think is, is the best. But the rest of those questions, you should really be making a conscious effort to look to um, look up the answers correctly. So that's the thing that I'm telling you guys. But again, if you're practicing, you're not going to have this anxiety. You're not going to have this problem of, oh, depending on process of elimination. Because again, so many people think that that's just the way to go. That, oh, that you'll learn in the real world and it's different for everybody. The fundamentals of coding are still the same. Okay, the fundamentals of coding are the same for everybody. We all have the same rules we have to follow. And again, if you're just trying to rush and if you fail the test and you're trying to take it again a couple of weeks later or maybe 30 days later, you shouldn't be doing that either. Because if you failed it even by a few points, it does not mean that, oh, you can just easily pass it the next time. Some people do because some people it's like, okay, well, I was just too nervous. They let something else get to them. And that was how they ended up failing the first time. But again, if you are taking it three and four and five times, you should not be taking it three and four and five times because uh, the first time failing it, I could understand. The second time, if you do it again, something's wrong. That means that you don't know the material that you need to take the time to learn it before you attempt it again. Okay. Because again, two times I can understand, but three or four times, no. Five times, no, because there's something else wrong and you're not taking the time to study. So if you just take the time to slow down and really review the material and practice looking up the codes, getting comfortable with the books, not relying on tabs and highlights and all kinds of stupid stuff all over your book, you'll be okay. And yeah, I do say it's stupid because it is. That means that you not paying attention to what's going on in the book. A lot of times they say like people... Um, they're not listening to learn. They listen to respond. And I see that a lot with students, right? Is that, you know, they've got all kinds of excuses on why they need their books tabbed or why they need them highlighted or, oh, that's just how they learn. The medical coding um, manuals are not workbooks, okay? There's workbooks for that. You can write and highlight all over workbooks all you want to. You can tab workbooks all you want to. Uh, but when it comes to these um, coding manuals, no, you need to treat them very well and you need to make sure that you're using them and looking up the, the diagnoses or looking up the procedures or whatever it is that you're doing when you're studying for your exam. Study for one hour maximum at a time, then take a break, maybe 10 or 15 minutes 
And then uh, minimum time you should be studying is 30 minutes at a time. If you study for 30 minutes because you're going to look up some codes and code real quick and then get back to doing whatever you're doing, then come back to it later, that's totally fine. But again, it is possible to make the time during the week to do all of these things, to squeeze that time in. And then again, if you're there um, sitting around with a family, you can have your manual with you while everybody's watching TV and you could be looking through the book. I've always recommended that as well, that you should actually take the time to sit down and look through the entire book, flip every single page. Not that you're having to read everything, but this is because you need to familiarize yourself. I have gotten many emails from people who have panicked after they have failed. And they say, well, Blue, I just got in there and I completely froze. I panicked. There is no reason that you should be that panicked if you are studying like you're supposed to. If you are getting familiar with the book, this is just going to be the, the final lap for you to demonstrate what you know. You should not be panicking that badly because, again, if you're doing that, that tells me that you did not study like you were supposed to or that you were trying to cram at the last minute and you can't do that either. So take the time to study appropriately. Take your 20 hours per week. If you miss a couple of hours here and there, maybe you got up to 18 hours and you say, well, it's the end of the week and I wasn't able to do the rest of it. That's okay. You can just pick up and keep going the next week. But again, if you're doing three and a half hours, during the weekdays, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunchtime, 30 minutes in the afternoon, and then a one hour and one hour, and you're taking your breaks in between, that's still giving yourself time to absorb a lot of this information. And studying can be a form of listening. You could be listening to the guidelines. You could be listening to YouTube videos about medical terminology and anatomy. Because that plays a big part in you understanding what you're reading. Because it's not just about looking up the codes. It's actually understanding what it's saying. There's two different things. There's two different mindsets going there when, when you are looking at these things. It's not just about looking up codes. That's, that's one of the things that's very disheartening to hear is when people say that their teacher told them that they don't need to worry about medical terminology and anatomy. They just need to learn to look up the codes. No, that's not the way that it is. Because if you're just looking up the codes, there's a good chance that you, and not understanding what the anatomy and medical terminology is all about, there's a good chance you're going to get the stuff wrong. Because there's a lot of terms that have dual meaning. And if you're not paying attention, oh, trust me, it'll show. It will show. So start taking it seriously and start getting to the point where um, you're going to be comfortable with the book. That yes, while the books are heavy and you feel that they're heavy, getting used to them and flipping the pages is going to make you go faster when you are in the room and you are um, in that test mode. And being in that test mode, it's just you in that test. I believe that if everybody is studying like they're supposed to be, that those tests will be passed with a higher frequency. And if you get stuck on something, if something absolutely does not make sense to you, then you need to reach out and find yourself a mentor or find yourself a tutor. Now, the difference between the two is a mentor will help you for free. A tutor will have to charge you because you're paying somebody for their time. And so that's the thing that you all need to understand. That if you're going to ask somebody for help, that you need to be willing to pay them for their time. And again, mentors will help you for free. There's some people that, you know, they're okay with that and that's what they do because they'll help occasionally and things like that. But don't take advantage of those people because those are good people. And they're willing to give you, give you their time for free then you need to pay attention. You need to take notes when they are speaking. You need to be gracious to them and thank them for their time. Uh, because if you are not appreciating them, those people can get burnt out very quickly and they will stop doing things to help others. Okay, So don't be a part of that. Make sure that if somebody is helping you for free, that you are, again, gracious to them and you let them know that you appreciate them. Okay. And that's all it takes. It's, it's just a very simple thing is just letting them know that you appreciate them. Okay. Now, um, it's, it's not that hard if you've been practicing guys, 
But again, if you are failing the test and then taking it, retaking it again immediately or as soon as they let you because you think that you can pass it again and then of course you fail it again, if you are doing that, then you need to stop and you need to take at least 90 days break so that way you can get to the studying like you should and make sure that you're practicing like you're supposed to for those 20 hours every single week. And again, studying and practicing means watching YouTube videos about medical terminology and anatomy, listening to the guidelines, reading the guidelines in their entirety at least once per week. And guess what? That will make you a faster reader because I've heard that as well as well. People will say, well, you know, Blue, I'm, a, I'm just a slow reader and, you know, I was reading everything and I got all flustered and panicked. Again, this is the best way to alleviate being flustered is to actually do the work and practice. No one will come to your rescue, guys. This is on you. And a lot of times people are doing this on their own. There's not, they're not surrounded by you know, friends that are doing this. I mean, most of the stuff is going to be online anyway uh, with some of these schools. And sometimes people will reach out in these Facebook groups trying to look for community that way. Facebook um, is good for certain things, but when it comes to this, this industry, uh, there's a lot of misinformation on Facebook, and unfortunately. And then people will run around confused instead of just making up their mind and then just doing something. Okay, so that's the thing that you all need to understand. You can't believe everything that you hear on Facebook. All right. And if somebody says something about, oh, well, you know, I could pass and I can't find a job. You never know why they couldn't pass. You never know why they couldn't find a job. Some people will think that they just need to apply for three or four jobs and then they're good to go. And then when they don't get hired because, duh, three or four jobs that you applied for. Uh, and when they don't get hired, then they're out there singing that song that, oh, nobody wants to hire me because I'm brand new and, you know, I have an apprentice and I, I can't get hired. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that you're an apprentice. I'm a resume writer and I write plenty of resumes for uh, apprentices. And trust me, they've been successful. This is not a guarantee, but they have been successful with the resumes that I've sent them with. Because, again, it's about putting in your best foot forward and the same thing that you have to do for this exam. So again, don't listen to all those people. Don't get all wrapped up in what they're saying and focus on what you have to do and focus on the way you need to learn. And again, invest in a tutor if you need to, somebody that can help guide you and get you going on the right track or explain it to you. Okay. When people ask me about my tutoring uh, sessions, we meet over Zoom and it's for one hour and we talk about your issues as far as like what's confusing you and you know what's going on things like that I don't do lesson plans okay some people think that that's what a tutor is and that's not what a tutor is a tutor is there to help you to understand they are essentially a subject matter expert and they're designed to help you to understand what it is that's troubling you and sometimes that's what you need you need somebody to explain it to you and that's totally fine uh, but again investing in a good tutor will do wonders for you. Uh, again, I, I'm a tutor myself. My rate and contact information is in the description box below. There's also tons of tutors on LinkedIn, okay? So you can totally reach out on LinkedIn and see if anybody has any recommendations for a medical coding tutor, okay? So that's my advice anyway. But again, if you are gonna be uh, sitting for this exam again, take the next attempt seriously, okay? Do not cram for these tests. Do not cram because the more that you cram, again, the more you're going to stress your brain out. Take a break after you've been studying for one hour. Do not go past one hour because people have told me, well, Blue, I studied for eight hours straight and I got a headache. You earned that headache and I don't feel sorry for you because I've always said to take a break. Nobody should be studying for eight hours straight. That's just stupid because your brain's not going to be able to retain any of that. I know that for a fact because when I was studying for the CCS exam, um, when I was going through the um, ICD-10 PCS uh, Appendix M from the Optum book, <laughs> when I was going through that, you know, I was like, oh, why am I, I would get it. And then all of a sudden I would start not getting the answers. And I'm like, why am I not getting the answers? What am I doing wrong? And I looked at the clock and I had been studying past an hour. 
it was like an hour and a half, almost two hours. And I was like, it's no wonder I'm getting tired. And as an adult, we have to change the way that we look at studying. Okay. It's not a chore. All right. The more you discover about the coding, the better off you'll be. And the more confident that you'll be that next go round. So take my advice, guys. I'm just telling you 20 hours per week. No excuses. None at all. When you can listen to something or you can be doing the workbook. Okay. That's all your 20 hours per week. Listen, read, or work through the workbook. That's what you need to do. So that way you can prepare yourself and be ready for the next go round. And remember that um, with the AAPC exam, it is two minutes, 40 seconds per question. You are not going to spend two minutes, 40 seconds on every single question. There's going to be some questions that you're going to be able to get through very quickly, but there's going to be others that's going to take you a little bit of time. So again, work on your pacing. And how do you work on your pacing? You work on your pacing by looking up codes. And whether it is working through scenarios or whether it is looking at a list of, of diagnoses, of procedures, and just looking them up. On my Patreon channel, that's what I do. I post 10 question coding quizzes. Sometimes they're eight questions because some of the questions are a little bit longer. But I post these so that way people can have a chance to practice looking up the codes and sometimes people say well we want scenarios no you got to crawl before you walk if you cannot learn to spot um, those diagnoses and look them up and then get to the get to the scenarios again you got to crawl before you walk i'm just saying so with that said i'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up but best of luck to you on your next attempt you guys can do it all you have to do is just put your head down and you just start studying, all right? And you take that time and you prioritize it. If it's important to you, you will make the time for it. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.